Om Namo Narayan Aya, welcome back to another day as we work our way towards the end of Canto 1 of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I want to confess, it's a really nice sunny day out, and I would love to go out, love to take a walk, um, but um, it's important to sit here and study. <laughs> it's important to do these, this learning. The, the, the sun and the enjoyment from it may put me in a good mood, but you know, we all know that's transient. It, it will pass. I'll have things I need to do with my day. I have to go buy some new running shoes. Um, uh, I don't know what else I have to do, but this reading that I'm doing, this isn't transient. This is the truth. And to me, it, it just, I know a lot of people say, well, do you want to get out? Do you want to do things? I'm like, yeah, absolutely I do. But I also want to learn what is still going to be here, even if it's raining out. Even if the clouds come, even in a year from now, this is going to be here, and and I find time for this, and I guess it's a it's a worthwhile sacrifice. So, hopefully, you feel the same. Um, whether you're joining me here in these videos regularly, thank you, or you're doing your own reading or your own study, it's not a sacrifice. It's an enjoyment. It's a pleasure. It's finding the truth. It's finding yourself, and it's worshiping God. That's how I see it. So um, here we go. Don't know where that came from. Just in a good mood today. Chapter 17, Punishment and Reward of Kali. Sudha Goswami said, After reaching that place, Maharaja Parachit observed that the lower class Shudra, dressed like a king, was beating a cow and bull with a club as if they had no owner. The bull was as white as a white lotus flower. He was terrified with the Shudra who was beating him, and he was so afraid that he was standing on one leg, trembling and urinating. Although the cow was beneficial because one can draw religious principles from her, she was now rendered poor and calfless. Her legs were being beaten by a shudra. There were tears in her eyes and she was distressed and weak. She was hankering after some grass in the field. Maharaja Prichit, well equipped with arrows and bow and seated on a gold embossed chariot, spoke to the shudra with a deep voice sounding like thunder. Who are you? You appear to be strong and that you dare kill within my protection those who are helpless. By your dress you pose yourself to be a godly king, but your deeds you are opposing the principles of the twice-born Kshatriyas. You rogue! Do you dare beat an innocent cow because Lord Krishna and Arjuna, the carrier of the Gandiva bow, are out of sight? Since you are beating the innocent in a secluded place, you are considered a culprit and therefore deserve to be killed. Then Maharaja Parishit asked the bull, Who are you? Are you a bull as white as a white lotus, or are you a demigod? You have lost three of your legs and are moving on only one. Are you some demigod causing us grief in the form of a bull? Now for the first time, in a kingdom well protected by the arms of the kings of the Kuru dynasty, I see you grieving with tears in your eyes. Up until now, no one on earth has ever shed tears because of royal negligence. O oh, son of Surabi, you need lament no longer now. There is no need to fear this low-class Shudra. And O oh, mother cow, as long as I am living as the ruler and subduer of all envious men, there is no cause for you to cry. Everything will be good for you. Chast one, the king's good name, duration of life, and good rebirth vanish when all kinds of living beings are terrified by miscreants in his kingdom. It is certainly his prime duty of the king to subdue first the sufferings of those who suffer. Therefore, I must kill this most wretched man because he is violent against all other living beings. Maharaja Parishit repeatedly addressed and questioned the bull thus. O son of Subra, Su Rabi, who has cut off your legs? In the state of the kings who are obedient to the laws of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, there is no one as happy, as unhappy as you. Oh, Bull, you are offenseless and thoroughly honest, therefore I wish all good to you. Please tell me of the perpetrator of these mutilations, which blacken the reputation of the sons of Pritna. Whoever causes offenseless living beings to suffer must fear me everywhere and everywhere in the world. 
by curbing dishonest miscreants, one automatically benefits the offenseless. An upstart living being who commits offenses by torturing those who are offenseless shall be directly uprooted by me, even though he be a zen of heaven with armor and decorations. The supreme duty of the ruling king is to give all protection to law-abiding persons and to chastise those who stray from the ordinances of the scriptures in ordinary times when there is no emergency. The personality of religion said to these words just spoken by you befeat a person of the pandava dynasty captivated by the devotional qualities of the pandavas even lord krishna performed duties as a messenger O oh, greatest among human beings it is very difficult to ascertain the particular miscreant who has caused our sufferings because we are all bewildered by all the different auctions of theoretical philosophers some of these philosophers who deny all sorts of duality declare that one's own self is responsible for his personal happiness and distress. Others say that the superhuman powers are responsible. Why, yet others say that activity is responsible. And the gross materialists maintain that it is nature that is the ultimate cause. There are also some thinkers who believe that no one can ascertain the cause of distress by argumentation, nor know it by imagination, nor express it with words. Oh, sage amongst kings, judge for yourself by thinking over all this with your own intelligence. Sudaka Swami said, Ah, oh, best among the Brahmanas. The Emperor Parikshit, thus hearing the personality of religion speak, was fully satisfied, and without mistake or regret, he gave his reply. He said, Ah, oh, you, who are in the form of a bull, you know the truth of religion, and you are speaking according to the principle that the destination intended for the perpetrator of irreligious acts is also intended for one who identifies the perpetrator. You are no other than the personality of religion. Thus it is concluded that the Lord's energies are inconceivable. No one can estimate them by mental speculation or word jugglery. In the age of such a truthfulness, your four legs were established by the four principles of austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. But it appears that three of your legs are broken due to rampant irreligion in the form of pride, lust for women, and intoxication. You are now standing on one leg only, which is your truthfulness, and you are somehow or other hobbling along, but quarrel personified and Kali, flourishing by deceit. It is also trying to destroy that leg. The burden of the earth was certainly diminished by Lord Vishnu and by others as well when he was present as an incarnation. All good was performed because of his auspicious footprints. Now she, the chaste one, being unfortunately forsaken by Lord Vishnu, laments her future with tears in her eyes, for now she is being ruled and enjoyed by lower class men whose poses rulers. Maharaja Parikshit, who could fight 1,000 enemies single-handedly, thus pacified the personality of religion and the earth. Then he took up his sharp sword to kill the personality of God, Kali, who is the cause of all irreligion. When the personality of Kali understood that the king was willing to kill him, he at once abandoned the dress of a king and, under pressure of fear, completely surrendered, bowing the head. Maharaja Parikshit, who was qualified to accept surrender and worthy of being sung in history, did not kill the poor surrendered and fallen Kali, but smiled compassionately, for he was kind to the poor. The king said, We have inherited the fame of Arjuna. Therefore, since you have surrendered yourself with folded hands, you need not fear your life. But you cannot remain in my kingdom, for you are the friend of irreligion. If the personality of Kali, irreligion, is allowed to act as a man-god or an executive head, certainly irreligious principles would like greed and falsehood, robbery, incivility, treachery and misfortune, cheating and quarrel and vanity will abound. Therefore, O oh friend of irreligion, you do not deserve to remain in a place where experts perform sacrifices according to truth and religious principles for the satisfaction of the supreme personality of Godhead. In all sacrificial ceremonies, although sometimes a demigod is worshipped, the supreme personality of Godhead is worshipped because he is the super soul of everyone and exists both inside and outside like the air. Thus, it is he only who awards all welfare 
to the worshiper. Sudha Goswami said, The personality of Kali thus being ordered by Maharaja Parishit began to tremble in fear. Seeing the king before him like Yamaraja ready to kill him, Kali spoke to the king as follows. Oh, your majesty, though I may live everywhere and anywhere under your order, I shall but see you with bows and arrows wherever I look. Therefore, O oh, chief among the protectors of religion, please fix some place for me where I can live permanently under the protection of your government. Sudha Goswami said, Maharishi Parishit, thus being petitioned by the personality of Kali, gave him permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter were performed. The personality of Kali asked for something more, and because of his begging, the king also gave him permission to live where there is gold, because wherever there is gold, there is also falsity, intoxication, lust, envy, and enmity. Thus the personality of Ga Kali, by the directions of Maharaja Prichik, the son of Uttara, was allowed to live in those five places. Therefore, whoever desires progressive well-being, especially kings, religionists, religionists, public leaders, brahmanas, and sannyasis, should never come in contact with the four above-mentioned irreligious principles. Thereafter, the king reestablished the lost legs of the personality of religion, and by encouraging activities, he sufficiently improved the condition of the earth. The most fortunate emperor, who was entrusted with the kingdom of Hanistapura by Maharaja Yudhisthira, when he desired to retire to the forest, is now ruling the world with great success due to his being glorified by the deeds of the kings of the Kuru dynasty. Maharaja Parishit, the son of Abhibhanyu, is so experienced that by dint of his expert administration and patronage, it has been possible for you to perform a sacrifice such as this. That ends this chapter. So that was an interesting chapter. I, I, I had two notes on it and then, and then a story. Um, it said, at one point I was reading along, and it was like, the personality of religion said. And I didn't realize it was the cow that was the personality of religion. I couldn't quite get that. And so I actually stopped the recording and started over again, because I just, I really kind of lost myself. Also, it refers to Kali as um, a he. I think of Kali as a woman. So... I don't know that much about Kali, so I might be wrong on that. Maybe Kali has many forms. I don't know. Um, it's interesting what they say about Kali here, though. Kali is the friend of a religion, and is and is all these things, these gambling, drinking, prostitution. You get Kali, you get those. Or you want those, you'll get Kali. I have a friend who says Kali is his guardian angel, because... I guess Hinduism has... He's not Hindu, but he fuses... He's New Age. And he often reads books about Kali that are 100% New Age. He's never read any scripture. He actually asked me once what Hinduism was. So you worship a Hindu god, but you don't know what that Hindu god's religion is or anything about Kali. Nothing that's not in a book that is just mixed with theosophy and whatever anyone thinks of. And he says that Kali is just the most loving, wonderful God, and all the stories about Kali are not true, that she never did any horrible things. And I'm like, um, I actually do believe you that after thousands of years, suddenly Kali has spoken to this guy who uh, walks dogs for a living, this new revelation that nobody has ever heard. And are you really talking to Kali? who doesn't know anything about Hinduism and doesn't know anything about her own past and who doesn't teach you anything about her. It's just like, he'll mention things to me. I'm like, yeah, that's not anything. I mean, like, that sounds really weird. And it's just like, he, he every so often, he goes, the last time we spoke, we kind of had a falling out. He goes, well, Kali wants me to do some Hindu work. I'm like, what is that? What is Hindu work? Hinduism is something you just turn on and off like a light switch. It's your life. It's a belief system. So Kali wants you to do something that you don't believe in, like throw a flower on the river. I, I don't believe that. And I really don't believe he's following Kali. And I believe his, his... Like, I would ask him about Hinduism, or he would ask me about Hinduism, and I'd say, oh, here's a great video. Here's this. Oh, I don't have time for this. Tell me something about... I'm like, the last time we spoke, he wanted me to declare that he had a divine revelation because he saw 666 in his dream. I'm like, that's a Christian idea. And while it may have come to have a meeting in Hinduism, 
I, I'm not going to declare that you are the head of a new religion. I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that if you blow off anything I try to help you with and you don't want to read any true scripture about Kali and learn about Kali from something other than your fantasies. I didn't quite say that, but he's also a bit of a user and abuser and wants everyone to do things with him. But the point of this story is it's interesting because he's, I've had friends who've known him for a long, long time, and he always is full of problems. Oh my God, never has money. He asks for loans, may or may not pay you back. He asked us for like almost $2,000 once because um, he had no money because he was spending it. And, um, oh, I have a porn addiction. Oh, I want to get back to my ex who beats me. Um, I, I'm into drinking. I'm into this. I'm into that. I want, he literally wants to be healthy and vegetarianism. So he goes, well, can I, he literally at one point said, well, do you think I can eat steak like four nights a week? Yeah, because what vegetarian doesn't eat steak four nights a week? And he's full of all these horrible things. And it's so funny that he communes with Kali, or says he does, and yet he's always full of problems, and they never get fixed. And and uh, it's just fascinating. I'm like, if Kali is such an amazing, wonderful person who's so helpful, yet you seem to be epitomizing the essence of her negativity. So there's a moral to the story, and that is be careful who you talk to about things. Be careful who you discuss stuff. Find out where they're coming from. Like, my friend's all New Ageism, so I don't go to him to find out about Kali. I don't trust his sources. Be discerning with things. But also, I have to confess that because of him, I've not learned about Kali. Because I don't want to really learn about this person who seems to be investing my friend with a lot of bad stuff, if she's even real. And it's and it's it's really weird. It's a scary, strange situation. But but it's I don't know how I got on the every time I think of Kali, I think of him. I think I'm just ranting a little bit and purging something from my system. Frustration with seeing someone not wanting to study the truth, not wanting to learn the truth, not wanting to think that maybe this isn't Kali, maybe he's got a demon in his head, or maybe he's just lost in a world of, uh, of trying to isolate himself and has created this fictitious being, or maybe it is Kali, but reading a New Age book about her and then saying, oh, well, it quotes, it quotes a Hindu text, so that's all they need is just that one line quote. It's not good enough. The truth is with us all the time, and the truth is here, and it's on the internet, and you can read it, you can see, watch videos, you can go to teachers. I just, my heart goes out to these people who are going through this, and I'm like, ah, oh, you're literally like... And he's always wondering why no one wants to be a part of his Kali thing. I'm like, because you're a wreck, and you're, if Kali's horrible, you're proving it. But if she's great, it's questionable. I don't know. Anyways, I'm very much a skeptic about things because of people like him. I'm very much into research because of people like him. Kind of got this channel started because of people like him and wanting to find the truth. Wanting to find the truth. And, um, yeah. I don't know. Just rambling here because just trying to start a conversation on this really lovely day where, as I said, I could go out or I could study and learn the truth. And so we're studying. Thoughts, comments, all that good stuff below. <laughs> We'll plow through in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Harry Harry, Harry Rama, Harry Rama, Rama Rama.